Hi, welcome to Educator.com. Today we're going to talk about t-distributions. So previously we learned that there are different situations where you use z and when you use t. Um, and today we're going to talk about when to use z versus t. Um, and then we're going to also break down and sort of reflect and recognize what is z and t? What do they have in common and what's different about them? Uh, and for certain cases, we're going to ask the question, why not z? Why t instead? Um, what doesn't z have? What's sort of deficient about z? Uh, and then we're going to talk about rules of t distributions. Uh, they follow certain patterns. Um, and t distributions are a family of distributions uh, separated by degrees of freedom. So um, different t distributions have different degrees of freedom. So we're going to talk about what is degrees of freedom. Um, and then we're going to talk about how degrees of freedom relates to that family of t distributions. And then finally, summarize how to find t. Okay, so first off, when do, you, when do we use z versus t? And we sort of covered it in previous sections where um, we looked at whether we knew the population parameters or not. Um, in hypothesis testing, we frequently don't know the mu of the population. But sometimes we are given, uh, we are given sigma, right, for some reason or another. And in this case, we use z in order to figure out how many standard errors away from the mean we are in our SDOM. But in other situations, we do not know what sigma is. And in that case, we use t in order to figure out how many standard errors away our x bar is from our um, mu. And just to draw that picture for you, remember, we're always interested in the SDOM because the SDOM tends to be normal given certain conditions. And although mu, mu sub x bar equals uh, mu, right, given the central limit theorem, what we often want to know is if we have an x bar that falls here, or an x bar that falls here, or a x bar that falls somewhere like here. We want to know how far away it is from the mu sub x bar. And in order to find that, uh, we wouldn't just use the raw score and just get the raw distance, but we would want that distance in terms of standard deviation. But because this is the SDOM, we call that the standard error. So we would either want a z or a t. And these numbers tell us how many standard errors away we are from this point right in the middle, the mu. OK, so what is z and t? Well, the commonality it is, the commonality, as we saw before, is it tells us the number of standard error away from mu sub x bar, right? And that's common to both. Right? And that's what the z and t score both have in common. And because of that, their formulas look very much the same. Uh, for instance, one way we could write the z formula is like this. Um, let me just uh, write it here, let's see. So z equals, oops, z equals. Um, we have x bar minus mu, right, or mu sub x bar, they're the same. And this gives us the distance in terms of just the raw values, right? So just how many, whatever, inches away, uh, points away, whatever it is, whatever your raw score means, degrees away, right, divided by standard error. Right? But if we sort of double click on that standard error and look at what's inside, then this standard error, also written as sigma sub x bar, because it's the standard deviation of a whole bunch of means, is equal to sigma divided by the square root of n. Right? Now, if we look at the t, -sco t, uh, t score formula, then we have almost 
the same formula, at least at first, right? We have that distance divided by how big your little steps are, how big your standard deviations are. But when we double click on this standard error, right? Like, a, like something on a desktop, you double click it and open it up. What's inside? Well, you could also write this one as s, little s, sub x bar. And that would be little s divided by the square root of n. And herein lies this difference right there. That's our difference. So here the difference is that um, standard error found using sigma, the true population uh, standard deviation. Um, and, uh, and obviously, if you use the real deal, that's, that's sort of better or more accurate. Then the standard error found using estimated, oh, estimated population standard deviation, right? And that is S, right? And S is really estimated from the sample. And if we double clicked on S, it would look like this. Um, it's that basic idea of all the devi squared deviations away from, uh, away from X bar, right? Away from the uh, mean of the sample. So X, minus, X sub I minus X bar, right? Squared, we have all these squared deviations and we add them up, right? Divided by not N, but N minus one because this is our estimate of the uh, population standard deviation. And then all of that under the square root sign in order to just leave us with standard deviation rather than variance, right? And so um, this is an estimate of population standard deviation. It isn't the real deal, so it's not as accurate. So one thing you should know is that the z-score is um, less variable and the t-score is going to be more variable. And that's gonna come in um, come into bear on why we use which one.